Okay, good news is we've now moved on to entropy. Um, so let's do, uh, do that. So entropy, um, we've got various things. Is it going to increase or decrease? A liquid going to gas is going to increase. Three gas molecules go to one is going to decrease. A solid going to an aqueous solution is going to increase. A solid and a gas become a solid is going to decrease. I've got uh, three gas molecules here and uh, two liquids becoming um, two gas molecules. So that's going to also cause a decrease in the entropy. Um, right. For the next step, um, complete the table below. Uh, one atmosphere, ice melts into water, zero degrees C. What's the energy change for delta H and delta S? So the first one, delta H, is going to be positive. It's going to be endothermic because bonds are being broken. Obviously, as a solid becomes a liquid. Um, for delta S, that is going to uh, also uh, be positive because a liquid is more disordered than a solid. Right, okay, uh, we then got um, so, uh, some data here, entropy data, and they want me to calculate the standard entropy change for this reaction. So we know uh, delta S is going to equal the sum of the entropy for the product minus the sum of the entropy for the reactants. So if we do that, it's going to be 3 times 131 for hydrogen plus 198 for carbon monoxide minus 186 for methane and 189 for water. Uh, that is 591 minus 375, which gives you 216 joules per Kelvin per mole. Uh, two large scale uses for uh, hydrogen production. Ammonia manufacture, of course, is a big one um, that you've known from GCSE. Um, and also fuel cells, which you would have done um, as part of your electrophotential work. Uh, right, so this is quite an interesting one. Um, ammonium chloride can dissociate as follows. They've given me delta H and delta G at 298 Kelvin, and they want me to calculate delta G at uh, 1000 Kelvin. We know that delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Uh, what haven't they told us? Um, they have not told us delta S for that reaction, have they? So I need to work that out. So delta G equals delta H minus T. Delta, delta G, they've told me, as being 91.2. Delta H, they told me, as being 176. The temperature, they told me, for this was 298. And I need to work out delta S. So, if I do that, um, I'll just take that and divide by 298, I'm going to have delta S is going to equal plus 2.85 uh, kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. Right. Okay, then uh, what do I need? So I now need to calculate delta G. So I've found this in the equation, okay? Now I need to calculate delta G. Um, delta H is going to be the same, 176. The temperature is now 1000, and delta S we worked out to be 0 0.285. If I do that, I get minus 109 kilojoules per mole, therefore delta G is less than zero and it is a feasible reaction. Right, so this is now a mega question um, about uh, um, nickel. So let's go through this. 
Um, we need to explain various things, deep block element, transition element, ligand and complex armies. So let's go through this. So first of all, electron configuration of nickel is up on the board. Uh, nickel also forms nickel 2 plus. As you know, I lose a 4s first of all, so it's going to be the same but just without the 4s. And then really, um, it's just about going through the definition, so it's really nice for 7 marks. Um, D block means uh, a D block element, the highest energy uh, you've got um, electrons, the highest, en uh, highest orbital which is occupied is a D in the D block, in, sorry, a D subshell, helps if I know the definitions. A uh, transition element is, has an iron, forms an iron with an incomplete D subshell, so nickel would count as one because he's got an incomplete D subshell. You need 10 electrons to fill up a D subshell. A ligand donates an electron pair to nickel 2 plus, and a complex iron is an iron uh, which has um, ligands bonded, ligands bond to a uh, central metal iron by dated covalent bonds. Um, and a ligand is a substance that donates an electron pair to nickel 2 plus. So, various definitions to go through, I'm sure you can do that better than I can. Um, they also want a nice diagram as well for nickel, so let's pop one up on the board. Um, they... Right, okay, uh, so let's draw um, this iron here. Uh, they want me to draw nickel uh, 2 plus with six waters around him. So, there we go. Uh, do make sure that your oxygen is the one um, near the bond, it's a 2 plus and it's 90 degrees um, and make sure you, you try and get the, the wedges and the dashes uh, right. Um, if you want to, to be really super, uh, you can pop on your lone pairs for the oxygen as well. Right, I'm going to leave this up uh, while we go for the other, uh, just a couple of questions, it's quite useful. Um, so the first thing they want me to do is suggest formulae for A and B. So, first of all, concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to ni nickel 2 sulfate, and it goes lime green. Four coordinate comp complex, what's it likely? Well, it's likely to have had a ligand substitution reaction with chloride ions. Nickel, we know, is 2 plus. Chloride is 1 uh, negative. I've got four of them, so overall the complex is going to be two minus. For B, aqueous sodium hydroxide, so automatically that's ringing in bells saying precipitation reaction, and indeed a precipitate occurs. You know it's nickel two plus, so it's going to be nickel two hydroxide like so. They also want me to deduce the formula of um, C. So how can I do that? Well, they told me um, that the molar mass is 160.7. I need to take away from that. I know I've got one nickel. If we look on the old periodic table, nickel is 58.7. So let's do that. I've got 160.7 minus 58.7. I'm left with 102. So, concentrated ammonia is added. Ammonia has a molar mass of 17. So 102 divided by 17 gives me, quite nicely, 6. So it looks like this boy is going to be nickel surrounded by 6 ammonias. Ammonia, as you know, is neutral and so it's going to remain 2 plus. The final thing they want me to do is work out the equation for that one. Um, that's not too bad once you've got all your formulae. So you know you started with uh, nickel surrounded by six waters. You must have added six ammonias and you've ended up with nickel surrounded by six ammonias plus uh, six H2O, like so. 
So nothing too uh, too crazy there. Right, uh, so um, we've now got a uh, bithy ligand, quite nice. Um, hopefully you can see you're going to have a, a learn on your nitrogen and a learn on, on your nitrogen there. Um, and it gives me um, various structures like so, gives you a little bit to read through. What's it want me to do? First of all, what's the molecular formula to do, to do by pyridine? Um, if you count it all up, you should get to C10 H8N2. What is the coordination number? So this is nice and easy, yeah? You just count up your bonds, so it's going to be four like so. Right, they now want me to draw 3D diagrams for uh, four, uh, sorry, three bippies around ruthenium. And I can use it using the simplified diagram. So let's just have a look at that simplified diagram. So I can just put the ends and then um, a little connecting line. So it is ruthenium in the middle. Again, I would draw in your dashes and wedges. It's, it's easy, I, I think, to just put your nitrogens on as well. And then you can just link them up with bonds like so, and it is a two plus iron. Then do the same with your dashes and your wedges. Pop your nitrogens on, and then this is where you just need to check. So that is gonna go that way, isn't it? That goes that way, and that goes that way like so, and again, it's too good. Uh, and hopefully you can see these are optical isomers, uh, as you'd expect, when you've got, uh, you can have th uh, three bidentate ligands in an octahedral uh, arrangement will produce uh, optical isomers. Okay, um, four, four bippy now can form bridges, um, and they've given me uh, some information there. What is 4,4 bippy going to look like? Well, let's go back. They talked a little bit. If that's one, two, three, four, the nitrogen's going to be on the end here. So let's see if we can draw him out. So we're going to have bippy, 4,4 bippy. looks like that, that will form a core in the form of nickel. It tells you, you also have four waters attached, like so, and then it would carry on, like so. So that would be the repeat unit. So this would then join up to a nickel, another nickel, this would join up to another bippy. Um, the overall charge, well, that's neutral. This is all neutral. So it only contains one nickel two plus, so it's going to be two plus 